uh, just deadheading this viticella called abundance to try and get it to flower for longer. Today though, I don't want to talk about viticellas, I want to talk about cuttings and seedlings. Two months ago, I did a video showing you how to take cuttings, um, some by the traditional method and some using the hydropod that I have in here. Um, and I thought it only fair that I showed you the results. I've no idea how successful the traditional ones are because they're planted uh, in compost, but I can see how successful these ones are um, and we'll pop both of them up. I also have some seeds that are ready for transplanting so we can do both when we go to the small greenhouse. This is my hydropod. It's basically a dish of water with a pump inside and a spray to spray the bottom of the roots. I keep the lid on just to keep some moisture in, but the trick of the hydropod is to try and keep the leaves as dry as possible while the stems are getting sprayed with water. This protects the leaves from developing botrytis and other diseases that will kill them off. The trick is to keep the leaves alive long enough so that the stem forms roots. Let me show you. Here's the bottom of it. These are just held in with discs uh, with slits in. Um, as I say, there's a spray inside there and you can see that there are a lot of clematis here that have developed roots. Some of the roots are very long. Some of them are short, but with branches coming off. And the ones at this end are ready for potting up. So these are the ones that I want to pot up now and show you how they're done. Um, this one has a good root system, mainly on one side for some reason. And all I'm going to do is to pot it up in a, an ordinary compost mix. It's a peat based compost, I'm afraid, not a soil based one. So I think soil based ones compact and this helps the clematis uh, breathe uh, better and water drain away better. Um, so I'm just going to stand that in there, feed the compost around the, the cutting, just firm it in gently with my fingers and that's, that's one cutting. Uh, now I have a chart, fortunately, which tells me what's in each square. Um, I've written window at that end, so I don't get it the wrong way around. And this tells me that the one I've taken out is called octopus. And I've made a label out already with octopus just to save time. Put that in and there's one cutting done. And I've got about six to take uh, today. Um, same process. Uh, it doesn't matter what variety of clematis it is or what the root uh, shape is. Um, Here's one here, which has a nice root system. And this one is Alpina Tea Dance. Now, Tea Dance is not one that you will find on the market. It's not registered. It's a seedling that I planted um, a couple of years ago, which has turned into a very nice Alpina with a um, sort of frilly skirt for a shower and it uh, for a flower and it reminded me of the sort of um skirts that perhaps people would wear in an afternoon when they went to a tea dance hence the name right i'll pop those on um, and then we'll go and have a look at putting on some seedlings these are the cuttings that i've just taken out of the hydropod and the most important thing to do next is to water them, not just because they need water, but the process of watering will settle the compost around the roots to make sure there are no air pockets. Now, with all cuttings that have been in a hydropod, I normally put them in an enclosed container for a few days, just so that they're not moving directly from being having their roots permanently wet to being in the open air. So 
I'm going to put a lid on this in a few minutes. I'll move them over here and we'll get the other cuttings that I've taken in a traditional way to see how successful or otherwise I've been. Now, when I took these originally, I just put a small lid on here. Um, I kept the underside of this damp and avoided watering the compost at all because I didn't want to get water on the leaves. Again, to try and reduce the possibility of rot setting in. And you can see with that one that that's quite, quite rotted. The top is dying, so it's very unlikely that roots will have started forming on there. Same with that one there. But the ones at this end look just as healthy as the ones in the hydropod. So I'm going to lift these and see how well rooted they are. I know there are some roots because I've deliberately used a seed tray with lots of holes in the bottom. So you can actually see the roots coming through. Right, I'll get my plastic fork and let's see how lucky or otherwise we've been. The ones at this end are of a Montana called Herges Croft. Again, it's not one that you will find on the market. It's from seeds I was given. And there we have, oh, it's got quite a, a decent root system on it. So these will be potted up in exactly the same way as the ones from the hydropod. Feed in the compost, which is not a soil-based compost. Put those there and water them. You can tell by just tugging at them whether there's any resistance or not. Um, there's a couple here where, well, there's no resistance at all, so I know roots haven't formed on, on that one yet. Um, nor on that one. But this first two rows is, is promising. So let's see if there are some roots on this one as well. Well, there are. They're not extensive roots, but let's see if there's enough root for it to survive. I'll put a label on in a minute. I know what all three of these are. They're the same ones. And there's a, that's not a bad root system on that one. Now this Montana Herges Croft is a fairly vigorous plant. So it should break away quite easily. I'll water those straight away. Now here's a an idea for you if you want to save on plastic. These are called Herges Croft, so rather than have three labels, especially when it is possible that not all three are going to survive, I'll put a label in there then I'll take one of these coloured labels. So I've got bags of different colours. I'll use the grey. So I'll take three grey labels. One in there, one in there, and one in there. So when I've put them on the bench and I see they've got a grey label, I just need to look for the grey label with the yellow label in and know that that's the name of all of them. It means I've only written out one label because these are reusable every time. So that's the first row. What have we got in the second row? These ones are Jean Cumston. Now Jean Cumston is a winter flowering clematis. And there's quite a lot of resistance, so I'm hoping it's a, a decent root system. I'm trying as gently as possible Yes, it's got a, a dead leaf there, well, another one there, but that's, that is a root. Again, whether it's a, a, a strong enough root, only time will tell. Well, the next couple of weeks will tell. This will either start to uh, grow or it will 
not enjoy being moved and tell me so by withering one at this end yes that's got a good root system on and because some of the tops come away I'll try and just put that in gently without disturbing the roots anymore and whether I've got a third one I'm not sure yes yes that's quite a reasonable root doesn't need to be firmed down too much because the water will do that water these in so that the compost moves around the roots keeping them snug uh, and here we have the label for Jean Cumston and I'll pick a different colour to put with it I need to be aware that I've got the same system going over here so I have to be careful not to replicate um, I don't think I have any red ones so I'll use a red one but even if I did you could put a combination of a, a red and an orange in or as long as they're, they're different then you're not going to get them mixed up with any of the others now because these are cuttings I don't need to mark the label when I show you the seedlings I need to put an S or something like that on them to differentiate between those and cuttings because as you know cuttings should come true to the parent plant but seedlings certainly won't right I'll I'll look into that a bit later on to see if any more have rooted but that gives you the idea now and the final thing I want to do is just to add these to the propagator over here the lid on it's a very old propagator um, it's gone a bit green but that doesn't matter I'll just let some uh, air in and that's just to cushion the blow from where the, the medium that they've been and the environment they've been in to being put out on the bench right that's the cuttings those are the cuttings this is the cuttings yeah those are the cuttings seedlings these are seedlings of the Montana Grandiflora, which grows in the front of the house. Uh, I've already potted on one pot of these, uh, but if you watch my video on seeds, you will know that I potted up two um, of these pots with seeds in, uh, and both have germinated well. This has quite a few seedlings in, so I'm gonna show you how to pot these up, which is, same really as the cuttings if they'll come out now we've got quite a rash of them there some will come out more easily than others I've probably left this a bit too long probably should have taken them out earlier before the, the roots get so entwined but what you really need Is a cutting like that that's a, a decent cutting so again potted up in it exactly the same way as I potted up the the cuttings and that seedling I will mark well I'll put the grandiflora label in now and choose another colored plastic one to put in with it but I will mark that as a seedling so that I know that's not going to come true. So it was a challenge disentangling them without doing any damage or as little damage as possible to the other roots. Yes, it would have been better had I potted these on slightly earlier. It depends how many seedlings you, you want, but some will be stronger than others um, and you can be ruthless you don't have to s preserve every seedling 
if I get seven or eight out of this I'll be more than happy I'll do one more and then I'll water them and I can pot up the rest later on so seedlings and cuttings I'll keep you in touch with what's going on and how successful uh, or otherwise these are it's not too late in the year if you want to try and take some cuttings um, probably September is getting a bit late but use the month of August August is a very good growing month certainly it's a good month to take cuttings of penstemon and other um, perennials so there's no reason why clematis shouldn't take well after that but try it uh, some may die some may survive it doesn't matter but you could get your own plants uh, a lot cheaper than the supermarkets and in terms of seeds um, I'll do more in the autumn when the seeds are ripening uh, it's really enjoyable taking your own seedlings because you don't know what you're going to get they don't uh, run true to the parentage and you could get a new variety to exhibit at Chelsea or just have something different in your garden to anybody else see you soon